Hey everybody, it's Justin Stubleski from the Camera Shop of Muskegon, and I have the pleasure uh, this afternoon slash evening to be talking to two very special uh, people near and dear to my heart, near and dear to the Camera Shop and to Michigan, uh, Todd and Brad Reed. Todd and Brad Reed, thank you so much for joining us this uh, evening. Uh, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Great. Glad to be here, uh, Lydia. Well, I, I, I can't thank you guys enough uh, for uh, uh, allowing us to uh, kind of do this, this interview. We normally uh, have the opportunity to uh, sit down with a lot of our vendors, you know, like Olympus and Sony. And, uh, we, and we've got to interview some photographers that, you know, are ambassadors for Sigma and for Olympus. Uh, but this is the first time that uh, I get to go out in unex unexplored territory and I get to interview actual photographers, you know, outside of uh, outside of those uh, those vendors. So this is uh, this is going to be fun. We're looking forward uh, to it. Yeah. Uh, we, we've already got Todd Mertz. He's already saying, let's talk some photography. Todd, you're you're in the right place. Uh, these guys are the guys to talk about it. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I have to ask, um, you guys are open. Are you guys open to the public up there in, in Ludington? We've been open about a month, and uh, oh. we're, uh, of course, we got the, we had mask requirements uh, in our store before being mandated, and uh, we're mm -hmm. being very careful, but we were uh, enjoying uh, having our um, patrons and new folks uh, come on in. So, with, so it's, so yeah. it's kind of business as usual for you guys right now, just with you know the the the, you know obvious precautions with everything. Yep, and and uh, and I think now that it's uh, more mandated, it, it's a little easier to enforce. But we, the public, has been really good coming into our gallery. Maybe it has to do with the kind of business we are, but but uh, we haven't had anybody uh, get really upset at all. So, you know, I think everyone's pretty much respectful for it. I mean, I can I can understand that, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion and stuff. But, uh, you know, I was up in Frankfurt over the 4th of July weekend and everyone's kind of doing the same thing. You know, I mean, you just um, it's like we're, we're at the mercy of everything that's going on. So it's it's just nice that people are understanding. But I'm glad that you guys are open and that you guys uh, can service the public because that's very important. You know, I mean, I know you guys do a lot of your business that way. So, um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, the heart of our business is July 15 to August 15. So these next four weeks are the most crucial. And so, like we said, we'd rather have everybody wear a mask than to be shut down. You know, shut down doesn't help anybody. So um, this has been good. And, um, yeah. Good. Well, that's and then Ludington is still a busy place, and mm -hmm. but people are being respectful and being cautious. It's great. And that's really reassuring, you know, because it's it's one of those things where uh, you don't know how this is going to affect your business and how many people are going to be, uh, you know, brave enough to kind of uh, go out and, and do some shopping, especially discretionary shopping and, and whatnot. But it's it's really good to hear that Ludington is busy, that you guys are busy and uh, that business yeah. is going well. Yeah, I, I would add, too, that um, we've been on the trails a lot at Ludington State Park, particular Silver Lake State Park. and. Water and um, you know people are people are being pretty cooperative about social distancing on the trails. Uh, you know, especially like if you kind of make an early move to get over, they kind of tend to do the same to their side. Um, if if they kind of don't and the room is and, and we don't have more room to move, sometimes all you got to say is, you know, hey, we we've moved over for you. How you doing? You know, and then they'll yeah. go, oh, they'll go, oh, well, thanks, we'll move over for you, or they'll say. Well, I, I don't, it doesn't, I'm not really too concerned, but thank you. And, uh, and, you know, hopefully they get, get the clue that maybe we'd like to move over even a little more, but, but, uh, but people, people, people have been great. So. That's good. It's good to hear. It's really reassuring, especially with, you know, Ludington is a, mm -hmm. is a tourist town, you know, it's big tourists for summer mm -hmm. months. And so I know there's a lot of people coming in from out of state and out of the area and, um, yeah. Yeah you know, different ideas, different people. So who knows, you know, who you're yeah. dealing with. So yeah, and just a, a tip for photographers out there. You know, I, I think the one place that's tough to social distance right now, particularly, you know, um, is on peers. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to get that six feet sometimes. And uh, like at Ludington, there's lower shelves of the pier, but those are underwater now. So yeah. you can't, 
you can't get off that main wall. So if uh, if two people walking towards you side by side don't single up, uh, you're not going to be six feet, you know. So, you know, just things to keep in mind as, as we all are out there trying to pursue our passion. And be consciously aware of yeah, your surroundings, we, as always. Try to be and try, uh, you know, uh, we always tell our workshop students, as, as photographers out there, outdoor photographers, uh, we're representing our, our, our field of, of pursuit. And if, if, if we're not um, going out of our way to be extra um, courteous and thoughtful and nice, uh, if we act like we own a place or, you know, whatever, uh, don't keep other people in mind, uh, we can we can very well give our whole, our whole- um, Industry, you know, a bad field, name. Yeah, a bad name in a hurry. Yeah. You know, once you're wrong by that one photographer, um, we're all, we're all going to be in that same boat. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. Okay. Um, so there's, there's some other people tuning in who are saying hi. We've got Jason, uh, who's saying hi. He says, Hey guys, hey, Jason. uh, we've got Bill, uh, Bill is, uh, saying hello to uh, both Todd and Brad Reed and, hey, Bill. Sagno. and we've got Chris, we got Chris here. She's saying hello, everyone. Hello, Chris. Glad that you guys are all tuning yeah. in. Um, Feel free, you guys, as uh, uh, we're going to dive into it now here kind of head on. And if you guys have any questions along the way, don't be shy. I'll be able to uh, regulate those here and pass those on to both Todd and Brad. And uh, Mike Dixon is saying hello. Hello, Mike. Uh, Bill is also kind of chiming in saying nice to see you guys as well. So, uh, and of course, Richard, everyone's saying hello now. So we got all the, get the hellos out of the way. Um, and Sherry. Is also saying hi so uh, I'm glad that you guys are all tuning in so first and foremost uh, you know this I, what I like to kind of do is uh, I really want people to get a feel for who you guys are as individuals who you guys are as photographers uh, you know we can always talk shop but it's always it's kind of like this is your opportunity to do like your living biography right <laughs> and uh, uh, Todd we'll start with you because you're you're the one who got your feet wet with this whole thing and I guess you know for me personally and for those out there who are tuning in how did you get started in photography how did how did out of out of all these years because you're celebrating a very special milestone here I don't know if it's sp specifically today but we talked about it prior yeah. um, you know mm -hmm. with that special uh, event having occurred or occurring how did you get started with all this I think that milestone is old age. <laughs> but yeah, this is this happens to be my 50th year as a, as a photographer, and uh, my very first uh, photography class was as a journalism school student at Michigan State University. Go green. Um, Go white. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, so I, I actually I actually was a writer. Uh, who had to was required to take a photography class to get a degree in journalism at Michigan State, and I just happened to really enjoy it. And then I, uh, long story short, went to work at a small town newspaper, the Lady Daily News. Uh, first of all, doing a summer internship before graduation, and uh, um, they very quickly handed me a camera and gave me that old newsman's credo: F8 and be there. Just, just shoot something in the middle. We'll salvage something, Tom you know kind of deal that was less better than master chief photographer and also the area's master photographer for weddings and portraiture and all kinds of commercial and, uh, and news photography for for decades and but anyway uh uh the more i did it the more i liked it and over time uh i worked my way up to being the assistant managing editor of the newspaper and uh, a staff you know a staff writer covering a lot of uh, a lot of beats and a lot of uh, what I call hard news, bad news, uh, big issues. Uh, but what I really like to do, what I really learned I like to do is write feature stories and get out in the field and photograph everyday life and more than National Geographic style of photography, um, you know, uh, commercial fishermen, and farmers, and people close to the earth. And particularly, I, I liked, I was intrigued by the people who had professions that were close to the earth, like outdoors, like some of the ones I mentioned, and and, uh, and so I would uh, kind of keep going back to them, and almost bugging them, annoying them, to the point that uh, you know I'd almost become pretty pretty good friends with them, uh, at least to the point that they trusted me, and uh, and uh, 
could recognize that I had empathy for them and therefore might be kind of pretending to be kind of private people and people of great humility and not a lot of ego uh, uh, actually allowing me to and maybe over time getting a little comfortable with me getting that camera. So, so that's where it went. I uh, did that for 23 years and then uh, left there, went back in. I had stayed in the Coast Guard uh, Reserve and went back in the Coast Guard um, part to full time for a number of years after that, retiring in 2005 from the Coast Guard. And before that, we had opened our gallery. Oh, we also did, I've done art there for 47 years, I think, and we still do that. So, so anyway, now this is all I do. Brad and I, we had Todd and Brad Reed uh, photo gallery. It was uh, Todd Reed photography, and then along came Brad, and I was blessed to have him uh, choose to, to come along, and I'll let him tell that story. Yeah, so you're, so you're, so Brad, you're born at some point in time, and uh, you grow up, and at what point, you know, do you kind of, you know, do you kind of take the, the rain, not the reins of the legacy, but you kind of don the, you know, the, the whole photographer thing? How, how did you get started in all this, you know, with dads chasing journalism, and um, what's, what's your story? Um, I grew up living my dad's job. It was the type of job that it was 24 seven. Uh, you never knew when there was going to be a fire or an accident or, um, a fun event or a Tigers baseball game, whatever it was. Uh, we were blessed that even though we worked 80 to a hundred hours a week, uh, he included us a lot in that. And, um, I always loved the adventure. I never, uh, thought of myself as a doctor, never even really considered it uh, as a profession. Uh, in sixth grade, I had a really awesome sixth grade teacher, Fred Horseman, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach sixth grade, move back home in Ludington, and coach soccer, just like he did. And so early on, I had set my course on that. Uh, but all along, I would go out with my dad and you know, do the newspaper stuff. And then in 1993, I think it was, he quit the paper and started doing uh, photography and teaching out at West Shore, teaching photography and doing more art fair. Uh, and then Coast Guard in the summer and one weekend, at least in the uh, month in the winter. Um, all that time, uh, I would still love to go out with him and uh, explore those country roads or um, carry his tripod or, you know, just enjoy the moment, enjoy Michigan, uh, especially West Michigan at that time. We didn't travel as much around the whole state like we do now. Um, and, and I went to college, had a teaching degree, uh, moved back home and taught for a while and decided that wasn't for me. And uh, had a a lot of jobs in a short amount of time, worked in the family, uh, Budweiser beer, distributing business, and did construction, uh, tried a few different things. And, uh, finally, uh, I kind of shocked the whole family. I quit grad school uh, for social work, and I said, I want to run my dad's business. And I knew my dad could take it to a national level. Uh, he just didn't have time to do that because of his other commitments with the Coast Guard and teaching college and other things. So I said, I'm going to quit grad school. I'm going to work full time for Todd Reed photography and I'm going to take my dad global. That was my mission. So January 2004, um, that's what I did. And I worked for an entire year, um, basically for no pay and we traded a truck. So at the end of that year, I got my dad's truck and, uh, January of 2005, uh, I had learned a lot in that first year, and we had gone digital that first year, January of 04, we went digital. And uh, I said, I think it's time we start our own company. And my dad was super excited about it. And, um, we dissolved Todd Reed Photography and became co-owners of Todd and Brad Reed Photography. And got an LLP and did the whole uh, thing. and. It's been a wild ride ever since. Mm -hmm. so, Fast ride. Uh, 15 years now, I guess, officially 15 and a half uh, as business partners and uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. And we both, like you said, we do this 
full time. And you know we work a lot. We work hard, but uh, we've got an amazing team with us. Team Reed, and, uh, Rachel uh, as the manager running the shop, and Hannah and Dustin. And we just have a, a great time. I feel blessed. Yeah, and Rachel's uh, one of the uh, two main shooters of our business now, so that's a wonderful thing. She's just really, really, really uh, shot, got a chance to shine now, so that's really wonderful. Rachel uh, and I are doing a book together right now. But when you talk about wild rides, I, I always like to tell the story of how uh, uh, the wild ride is led by Brad, and uh, it's his wild ideas, and, and they're big ideas, and you know, and... And you know, one of the things that as I get older that I've learned is, is like I'm I'm willing to take more risk. And, yeah, okay. So what? If we fail, we fail. Let's let's do it, you know. But the the this is how it goes with our team. We call it team lead and we have Brad and I and uh, Rachel Goddard and, and Hannah Olson and and, uh, and and anyway, uh, our team will will be sitting around and and uh, It'd be early in the morning, and in the door, shoot Brad. He'd be gone. Oh, I was in the shower. And I had this idea. I woke up last night, and I had this dream. I had a great idea. And we all just take a deep breath because it's going to be big. It's going to be like grandiose, you know. And then we, then we talk about how we can do it, you know. Not like why we can't do it, but how do you make? As we say in the Coast Guard, make it so. How do you, how do you make it so? So. So it's a, it's pretty fun. Well, and that kind of leads me to kind of a follow up question here with that. You know, uh, you've got you've got these big ideas from Brad, right? And it's like you, you know it's going to be big when you when you walk in the door and the first thing you say, I was in the shower, but but first <laughs> I, I woke up last night. Um, so uh, you know, with that, I I, I kind of want to go back, Brad, to what you were saying. Like I want to take my dad's business global, and mm -hmm. and it's something that kind of resonates with me because. Uh, you know, very early on when I started doing, you know, photography myself personally, it's like, well, you know, if I can't be famous, like, nationally, well, then I'll be, I mean, global, you know, then I'll, like, I'll be famous nationally. If I can't be famous nationally, I'll be famous regionally. If I can't be famous regionally, then maybe I can be famous in the state. And then if it can't be the state, well, maybe my local area. So, you know, how have, how have you done you know, because again, these crazy ideas, how do you think you've done so far with, uh, you know, it's like, hey, I'm going to take my dad's business globally. Like, how do you, how, do you feel like you've accomplished like a lot of what you've done there? Um, I just, I just, I hope I'm not putting you too much on the spot with that, but I just, you know, those are big aspirations. Like when you just say, hey, I want to do this. As a reporter, that's a really good reporter's question. Um, well, we come from a long family of entrepreneurs, both on my dad's side, his parents and grandparents, and then on my mom's side, marble side. Um, and so I think it's just something that's kind of in my DNA to, to think big um, and then to gather a strong team of people that can help you get it done. Uh, I think I, I grew up just watching my whole family do that. Um, and and like he kind of hit on being a possibility thinker um and in our business you know like in any business i think the most important thing is the quality of the work and that's where i knew um there was a golden opportunity with my dad's work um there was something different about his work and that difference and that kind of set it apart from others is what I saw as a young uh, kind of big thinker was that's an opportunity. There's something unique because I watch people react to it. My whole life I've been at art fair um, or we had a gallery in our house there in the 1990s. So for 10 years, people would come into our living room, start crying, looking at his work. I knew there was something special and uh, I saw that specialness as an opportunity to take it global. And, and for me, it's not like I'm not driven by money, but the goal is not to make more money. But if we can go global, it allows us to go on these adventures and do our job and 
and tell our story. You know, we're, we're storytellers. That's what we do. We tell a story with a camera. That's what we love to do. The, the bigger we can go the business, the more opportunity we have to tell our story. So that was really my driving force. Um, and, you know, and it took some convincing along the way um, because as a lot of people know, there's the whole thing of starving artists. There, there's often not uh, photography or artists as a general. We haven't done as good a job of building an association like lawyers or doctors. You know, they make a certain amount of money because they have a certain amount of skill and they have said, okay, we're worth this much money. Artists didn't do that. They, they often were we're bartering and trading, which is not a bad thing. It was just a different way of, of getting to where they wanted to go. Um, so we're venturing into a business full time, knowing that it's not a business that's often real lucrative. And, you know, there's always the exceptions. But uh, for me, I saw that actually as uh, a really awesome challenge. Like there is money to be made and we can tell our stories and have a heck of a fun time doing it and get to work together, get to work in Ludington, get to tell Michigan's story. You know, it mm -hmm. it seems kind of all fluff and clouds and in a lot of ways it actually is. Like there is hard work and there is grunt work to be done, but, um, I think you kind of make your own bed in the morning and you decide, okay, this is going to be hard, but we're going to make it work. And we're going to figure out how to network um, and and tell our, our stories. And not everything's going to be, everything you try is going to be successful and you're not going to roam as and build a day. And just to kind of relate to this, we have people come in our gallery many times young people and then not the young people, people who maybe are they're kind of semi-retiring and they're, they're, they're looking to retire and they, they, they sort of think they would like to be professional photographers and do what we do. But every once in a while we get that person, they come in the gallery and they look around and they, which by the way, our, our photography gallery, um, and we're not sure we, we are, but we think we're the largest photography only gallery in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, but people come in and they look around and every once in a while you get somebody that'll say, oh, you guys got it made. You got it made. You got all this. You got all your pictures on the wall. You got all this. I can't even get blah, blah, blah. They won't take my work, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, and then I just, I take a deep breath and I try to be extra kind, but maybe a little educational, you know, like, well, you know, this didn't happen overnight. I worked three or four jobs at a time to get started at where we're at. You know, we we didn't start by having a nice gallery. We, we started by um, doing the local craft fair. And then we got worked our way up and got into the jury art fairs. And then we hit the Michigan art fair circuit. And then we while we were doing those two or three full and part-time jobs, we also spent 20 some weekends a year on the road doing art fair. You know, and then the kids got to the point where they had so many commitments, we couldn't live like gypsies and take them on the road and, and, and make slave laborers out of them anymore. <laughs> so then, then we decided we needed to have a gallery and move more to, if you build it, they will come. Unfortunately, we do live in Ludington and one of the most beautiful places on, on earth. And, you know, as many places on West Michigan here, Shoreline are, are wonderful. We, we have a special place and we were blessed to have been, you know, brought up here and fell in love with it. We say we're like salmon and always had to swim back. This is, this is where we've got to be. Um, but what I'm really getting at is, is that this was all built little by little, step by step, and then, and then, you know, Brad entering in when, you know, maybe I was burned out and tired out and retired from the Coast Guard in 2005, and, and he was already on board and trying to launch this thing, you know, and uh, I could have uh, otherwise uh, been ready to start almost fold my time and coast out, but now, you know, we've got this 
whole new thing. And 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 uh, you know, it needs a, it requires 110 percent, and it requires risk, and it requires uh, at times uh, mortgaging your house to to uh, expand the business or to to do that uh, Michigan book that is bigger and we would like to think better than than has ever been done before. And, 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 and if we went out and risked all that and we did it and we paid the bank back and then the bank loaned us more money and you know, seven books later, um, you know, we're we're still at it. And we've got two books on the on the burner right now, but I'll let Brad talk about that. But anyway the, the point is that, that you know it's not easy but if you really, really want it bad enough, uh, any of you photographers out there can go get it, you know? Uh, and, and, and I know a lot of you are really good because I know a lot of you personally. So, so uh, it's how much of your life you want to invest in, how much risk are you willing to take? You know, those are some things. And as far as that working your way nationally, I mean, we aren't where we want to be as far as, oh, well, people around the country in, the outdoor photography circle uh, all know about us, like they might know of, uh, you know, Ansel Adams or Sexton or Thomas uh, Mangelson, Mangelson or, or Clyde Butcher in the Florida Everglades or the, or the Munch, the Munch uh, father, Jim father, son, Jim Brandenburg. Yeah, you name it. No, we're, no, we're not there. We don't, we don't pretend to be. But do we have a goal of getting more there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have we had some books that have won national and international awards? Yes. You know, and and uh, and we have uh, you get the cover outdoor. Oh well, yeah, and we finally that had always been a goal of mine. We we got the cover, and we got a six-page spread with our images and the story about fall color uh, in Michigan. And uh, we got that because we 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 stayed at it and asked for the order and asked for the order and kept sending them. To, they'd say, "Oh, best fall color." states in the, in the country and never have michigan and we just uh, kept sending them stuff and sent them stuff and finally they did and and we showed you know we helped showcase the fact that michigan is um is excellent and you know so anyway uh i don't know if that totally answers your question but but we're not done dreaming and working to, to move further down the road well, and that's and that's a good thing. It's a, you know, are you ever truly done? I mean, it it, it does sound like, uh, and this is a good way to segue uh, into a question from the audience here. But I I do want to kind of ask a follow up question in in regards to, um, you know, something again that you had said about your personal work and what Brad's you know you know saw in you, um, is, you know, I've always felt that being genuine with people. And, and and just being just being true to yourself and to the people around you you know you were talking that you were um and from what i from what i heard you're like very salt of the earth kind of person and the th th those people who had their hands closest to the earth really resonated with you and brad you know you saw in your father like i see this really beautiful work and people walk into the house and they they start crying you know d does that have a lot to do with it, do you think? I mean, between the two of you, you can both answer. Is this? I just feel that, based upon what you're telling me, it, it just sounds like it's because you're you're connected to those people who are connected to the earth that you've, mm -hmm. instead of being those people who are connected to the earth, you've really connected to the people, and yeah. and because and yeah. because you can connect to the people, that influences your work in a different way that. It just resounds differently with people that that's why Brad's like, I can take this somewhere. I can do something with this. Well, I'd say that we've both always been very sensitive people. And I've always tried to be in tune with people. You know, as a reporter, I mean, I was the guy they would spend, send to cover the funeral where eight children died. You know, I would be the one that they'd send to the Desert Storm Soldiers family's house. To interview him after he died, you know. I mean, those are those are sad things, but 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 they sent me because I because I truly could empathize, empathize and mm -hmm. and, and reflect that and 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 and, and represent, represent our self well, but also for them to talk tell and, their and, story. Yeah, and tell their story. And it's the same. One of my favorite things I ever did as a newspaper man was cover 
a long period of demise of the end of the, the Scandinavian fisher, commercial fishermen, you know, where they literally were the fish supplies lowered and then they were they were literally pretty much you'd say driven out of business by the DNR because uh, because the fish supplies were were um, depleting. But um, that was so close to my heart. But I but I think I think we say, um, you know, you talk about being a sensitive person. Photography is feeling. Photography is feeling. Good photography is all about feeling. And, and, and if you don't have a feeling when you're shooting, how in the world are you going to tell that story? You know what I mean? Like you can take a good picture, but if, but if you're really engrossed in it, and at the same time, you're being that emotional person, you're also being that technical photographer and carrying out the mission. And then you and then you got that file and then you you're you're working it up and it's like every step you take, everything you do, you know, you're, you're it's like a total immersion in that making that photograph, uh, so that and then the post work as well, so that so that other people Get the feeling. They might not get the same feeling, but 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 hopefully it emotes. That that's the whole thing. You want you want you want to create photography that that emotes that causes people to have a feeling that is very experiential. It puts them there, and you know. So that that's what I say. Brad, you can jump in there. He just covered the capturing of it really well. You have to be in tune, and you have to be sensitive. And Empathetic. I mean, even if you're standing on a, a shoreline, you know, you're still empathetic to, you know, the seagulls or the dune grass. Or, you know, you're trying to tread lightly uh, and be a good steward of nature. But there's also the whole aspect of um, connection to people, and I think that has been one of our keys to success. Is um, not only because we connect well to people in good business networking. And uh, like we do with you guys, we buy most of our equipment from you guys and we have a great working relationship. And, and we appreciate that by the way. So we really thank you guys for that. You know, it, it's, it's building business connections and a really strong network that way, but it's also building network with people coming in your gallery, into your art fair booth and and you have to be able to build that connection instantly. You know, somebody's going to judge you in the first three seconds they meet you. So, I think part of our success is um, being able to connect to people. And what we tell our staff is, we don't try to sell our photos. We make the gallery an experience, and we make it all about them. Every question we ask them when they come in is all about them. Where are you staying? Where are you from? What do you do for work? What do you guys eat for lunch today? And we might talk to them for a half hour before we even ever mention a photo. And it's that kind of connection um, that allows people to take their guard down and then they start being empathetic and sensitive to what's around them. And you know, we're trying to show them things they might have missed um, on their trip to Ludington. No, maybe when they were here it was rainy, but you yeah. know, luckily we're here year round. We've got a great sunset. But because they're in the mood to be, mm -hmm. their guard is down and they're, they're more in tune. You know, obviously that equates for us to more sales. So it's all a cycle. And I, I think one of the things too is is, is that um, you 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 know, there's more people kind of using that terminology. But I but I think truly not only being a visual storyteller, but being an oral storyteller, as, as you're talking about your work with people, you're not sitting there bragging up your work, you're sitting there telling them about the experience, you're sitting there telling them a little bit about, and sometimes even telling them a little bit about, they'll say, oh, I really, I feel like I'm there, or oh, I like the way that doom grass is part of it. Well, you know, actually, that's all part of putting you there. They go, really? So yeah. You know, it, the ultimate landscape photograph is the one that when the person is looking at your photograph, they're not looking at a picture, it transcends and they, 
they are having that experience. They are there. They are on that dune grass, on that beach, at that water, watching those waves come in. They can hear it, smell it, taste it, feel it, as Brad likes to say. And that that's a high ground of landscape type photography. Uh, so, so you know, uh, I think part of what we all need to do as photographers is, is, is we're kind of educating our our viewers, not just our, our the ones that are necessarily going to buy from us, but actually teaching people to see better, you know, to see, you know, they, and we've had people, we've had people come in and say, you know, I've lived here all my life, but you caused me to see that better. Uh, I got stopped at a gas station in Muskegon one time, kind of a, a, a salty looking, my kind of guy, but you know, a <laughs> particularly tough looking, had his camo coat gear on, probably in his 50s, and he, I'm get, pumping gas and he comes marching up toward me, and I'm like, I think he's coming toward me. I hope this is okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a good experience. And he comes up and he goes, and when we have our logos on our car. You guys are you guys are ones that do those billboards that say, well, welcome to West Michigan. And I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, well, you know, you got that one on Muskegon. And he said, you made me proud to be from Muskegon. I've fished that river all my life. And, and you know, you make me proud to be from Muskegon. And I was like, that, that's like better than selling a $2,000 print right there. Just somebody that that is an everyday person that really appreciated that you could see what they, because of all those years on that river, they are in tune with the river. <laughs> That's the guy that you want to learn from. That's a visual artist right there. So, yeah. And you were talking real quick about telling the story of the images. The absolute master of that is Carl Sam. I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of meeting Carl and Jean. Um, and they did The Stranger in the Woods and the whole Gear series children's book. But there is nobody I've ever seen at any art fair in any medium that can wow a crowd and tell a story about his artwork and Carl Sands. Spellbinding. And it's mesmerizing, you know, he's a giant man, he's a huge teddy bear. Uh, but we learned so much from them and um, and they just opened everything for us. There was no fear of competition or uh, we're gonna outsell them or you know any of that. It was, oh, this is how we do it and it works really well for us. and. This is how we used to do it, and that doesn't work at all. Um, and so we really early on, I mean, I was a uh, 10-year-old snotty kid when I first met Carl, and we have become dear friends with them, and we've adopted that philosophy. So we pride ourselves. We don't have photographic secrets, and, and we often tell our business secrets, which drive some of our team members crazy. But... Uh, we just believe in kind of the brotherhood, sisterhood of photography. And it goes back to what I was talking about, like forming associations like doctors and lawyers and engineers. They all make a lot of money because they took their skills and they said, this is what we're worth. And you're going to pay us this amount if you want our services. And they all, they share, they have their medical journals, they share their tips and their trade, so they can all get better and save lives. We all have to do the same thing as Hartford. We need to share our tips and our tricks. And if we all want to make this and make a living doing it, or even just enjoy it more, that's yeah. the key to success. Yeah, I, I think part of that too is is that uh, traditionally um, artists have been willing or forced to accept but now expected to compromise on the price. Mm -hmm. So people will come in and they'll go, okay, what, what's the price? Oh, well, it's right there, you know. <laughs> well, what's, yeah. the real, what's the real price? You know, everybody, nobody right. sells for it. But it's right there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, that's not the price, you know. And, and uh, for I, you, love, it's but, doubled. I love, I love nothing more than the guy with the gold chains super tan and he's got the babe about a third his age on his arm and he's gonna he is gonna beat me up at the art fair. He's gonna 
he's going to get that picture. He's going to get that thousand dollar picture for three hundred bucks. You know, he, he really <laughs> thinks he's going to work. For it. And uh, you know, and he'll go, well, okay, what what do you sell for? And I'll blah, blah, blah. you know, and then I say, thousand bucks. Well, what's today's special? Thousand bucks. You know, <laughs> you know it, it just goes on. And I go, let me tell you what, if you want to buy three of them, first one's a thousand, but the second one will be nine hundred, third one eight hundred. How's that? Sure. Well, what do you mean? I go, yeah, well, it's a thousand dollars. I said, I put on there what I think is a fair price, sir. If if you don't feel like that's a fair price, you know, I really I really can understand that, and and you know, I guess you'll go on your way. And and they they are so mad because they didn't they didn't impress the babe with the big deal, you know, like that. Well, I'm yeah. a good shooter, you know. So that's that's just sort of a, that's that's the guy that I really look for in art there. Whereas somebody that came up and they couldn't afford a picture, she's a, I might give it to them, you know. I might yeah. give them half off. I might, you know. I mean, a, a true, a true, kind, humble person that didn't have the bucks in his pocket. But, uh, but you know, uh, it still goes down to the point that we should, we should, as photographers and any kind of artist, we should value ourselves and we should realize that that all that. Suppose a profit on something. Don't forget about eating your dinner. Don't forget about all those those fast foods on the road. Don't forget about the gas in the car. Don't forget about what it really costs to drive your mm-hmm. automobile. Don't forget about your camera equipment. Don't you know? On and on and on. Yeah, your COB. That's that's, that's when you get down to what your true profit is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so basically, don't don't sell yourself short. At the same time, we are in Michigan. We're not in California, and and you have to figure out what what the traffic will bear. That's what that old economics thing, you know. And so, uh, sometimes sometimes it just won't bear the price you want. And sometimes sometimes oh, it will, and sometimes it we've we've had this in the last week. We've had at least we've had at least a half a dozen shoppers that came in the last week and bought a really really expensive item and invariably we heard this kind of story well we we couldn't take that trip we couldn't take that family vacation to disney this year so we're finally buying the big print we wanted over the couch store or uh, we couldn't go to maui or uh, i've just had it and um, you know i haven't been able to spend money and i've always wanted a piece of your art and uh, or brad's art and, and so this is the day, you know, and so, um, so I think there's opportunity out there for all of us as photographers right now, even when we, we think it's tough. But uh, I think a, yeah. an interesting observation that we've had as well is with the uh, COVID and the lockdown and quarantine, you know, it gave a lot of people time to really think about what's important to them. And, and you know, I don't know if this is a national trend. But my guess is, if there was a way to track it, it is. But my guess is, art sales as a whole are up, and um, you know, some people are tight on money, but some people have been making more money than they used to. In the end, I think people are appreciating what art does for them, whether it's painting, drawing, mm-hmm. pottery, cooking, any kind of art. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm on the board at the art center and. Uh, we're not really uh, able to have a lot of big events, but we've had just tons of donations uh, because people want us to stick around because they're starting to really realize how important art has been to them and they don't want it to go away. Yeah. I just think that's an interesting little side note yeah. to uh, the quarantine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, perhaps people have had to spend a lot of time in their homes. So, they're realizing they might like some new art on the wall. So go yeah, I've been looking guys and gals out there. Sell, sell, sell. I've been looking at that same photo for the last two years. I think it's about time I do something yeah. different. Well, we um, think so too. <laughs> uh, well, and 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 again, I I know you guys have questions coming in. Um, I'm I'm going to get to those for you. Um, I just you guys are bringing up some good points, and I just kind of want to like you know bounce those back at you. You guys were talking about as a community. Um, you know that we need to, uh, and and I'll and I'll and I'll segue. I'll, I'll I'll tie this into Todd has been very vocal. He's got some questions here. He says, you know, I find that a lot of photographers are very competitive rather than supportive of each other. 
This frustrates me because all artists are unique. Do you guys try to support other photographers around you? How so? We kind of covered that already. Um, I wanted to kind of throw something I heard from one of my um, one of my um, not inspirations, but who do, who who do you have as a, like a mentor? I had a mentor when I was in Minnesota. Um, I was a I was a photo assistant. Uh, I was uh, freelancing, and this guy was a was a salaried photo assistant, and he was also a shooter on the side. And he helped me. Uh, you know, I got to spend time in the studio. He he gave me some good advice, and he says, you know, Justin, there are two different types of photographers out there. There'll be the ones that decide to share their secrets, and there'll be the ones that who who you know hoard everything and they won't share at all. And and something you know at that moment it was one of those things where. Um, you know, the guys who are think that they've got some secret thing that they don't want to give away, uh, they don't end up resonating well in the community, kind of like how Todd is kind of saying, you know, it's very competitive out there. And I think that can leave some really bitter tastes in people's mouths, especially if someone is wanting to learn and they're, and they're coming to you for some advice and they might not be asking much from you. Um, but what I, what I decided at that point was I don't want to be that guy who's selfish. With his information i want to be like the photographer who's willing to share his information because the stories he had to um the stories he had to tell about the 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 people he worked with at at where 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 i was at you know when he was kind of that that second that second shooter or Mm -hmm. that second assistant he just he had a lot of great things to say about the ones who were willing to share uh their knowledge and so that really resonated with me that you guys have that same feeling and uh we had the opportunity to have frank smith here um, from, he was, he's an Olympus ambassador. He's an architectural photographer. And, uh, he kind of, he had the same thing to say. We were out to dinner one night and we were just kind of talking about, you know, some things that, uh, really drive us in the industry. And he says, I just want to share my information. I just want to share the knowledge that I have. And, and that's really something that I like to do here. You know, we're, we're doing these, these Facebook photo challenges and, um, you know, I get really impassioned being able to share that knowledge with other people and and that's you know if i don't get to shoot myself and and i get to see somebody grow that i got to help you know kind of throw some some Mm. tips at them that really reinvigorates me to go want you know like if i'm not creating more it's like at least i can live vicariously through someone else's success you know and i just wanted to kind of point that out i thought that was a great point and i don't know if you guys have anything to follow up with that you know he says yeah I think I think uh, here's one of the things is um, you know all of us you know our 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 careers uh, you know it's a it's a small span of time in the big scope of things there's, but it's it's great to be able to pass it on. Brad and I have a saying with our workshops that we have no photographic secrets. So if you ask a question, we'll try to help you. If you if you came in and you asked us about Sometimes it's hard to say. People always want to know how much should I price stuff at. Well, that's a tough one. But 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 things like what kind of equipment to use, or how do you do this, or where's a good place to shoot northern lights, or um, what's what's the best trail for the sunrise at like State Park. Call us up or email us, or you know we're we're happy to happy to share. And and at our workshops, I mean, we we try to be really really invested in people and. And we love to see them succeed. And I will say to you that we have several um, workshop students, former workshop students, because uh, we've been doing this for how many years? 14, 14 years. Wow. Uh, that are super successful. I mean, that some of them are, uh, you know, in, in, in their own directions uh, as successful as us. And they're doing peer mission billboards and they're doing art shows and they're, they're doing them wedding photography and portrait photography and some of them are our competition but but you know that they're wonderful people we we have had the opportunity to help if not teach them everything maybe teach them a few key things and inspire them and then maybe they took more workshops and they believe you know one of the biggest things that i find with photography is one of the biggest things you have to kind of get through to people is to believe in themselves you know people have talent in them they just they just uh sometimes a a lot of the issues have to do with doubt and then getting over the doubt and going after it and also also on the other hand being willing to accept criticism 
constructive criticism, mm-hmm. not to people up. I, I, I just don't, I, I, I don't, if there's anything I don't like, it's a, an egotistical bully. So, so that's with, approach. with teaching, you know, like I said, I used to be a, a elementary school teacher. My dad taught out at West Shore for 25 years, community college here. So we have a lot of years of experience and then now 14 and a half years of teaching workshops. And the reason we love to teach workshops is because we get to meet new people and we get to learn from them. We're not doing it to just pass our knowledge on. Yes, that's what they assume we're getting paid for, but we're doing it because we want to build a relationship and a friendship with somebody and we're going to learn from them just as much as they're going to learn from us. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's part of what sets our workshops apart and why they've been so successful because uh, we don't come in there with giant egos and you have to do it exactly this way. Right. We can, we can show you the way we do it and you can choose to do it that way or not or blend it into the way you do it or not. Um, but we love that interaction with people and, mm-hmm. and to learn from them. And um, that's why we do workshops. It keeps yeah. us fresh. You know, we get to play with new cameras all the time because um, the workshop students just got a new camera before they came to the workshop. And it's yeah. something we've never seen. Mm-hmm. And it, it's fun for us to play with it and learn. And, you know, maybe we know a, a trick about that camera they don't. And maybe they know something we don't. Yeah, it's just a great relationship. Yeah, and I'd say on the ar- artistic side of our teaching, uh, the, one of the biggest things that we try to convey to people right away, even if they're talking about taking a workshop, is listen, we're we are not out to change your vision. Your vision is your vision. We had we had we had somebody once who wanted her daughter to take the class, but the daughter didn't want to take the class because she was afraid that we we'd screw up the way she was seeing the world or mm-hmm. whatever. And, but that's not it at all. The first thing we try to convey to people is, listen, your vision is your vision. That's a very personal, exciting thing. What we're going to do is try to give you very, very specific artistic tools and technical tools that will help you make your vision more clear and apparent and technically better uh, so others can and get it, you know, like make your make your vision more clear to people. That's what it's all about. Because yeah. everybody has their own vision. And man, I love seeing like there's nothing better I like than I, I'm a huge Facebook fanatic, following all my my uh, you know uh, not just students and former students, but but people that I respect around Michigan. But a lot of them are just people we we met for the first time at a waterfall in the UP, you know. Uh, uh, people that took our class, like John Matuszewski was on here tonight, and and uh, and and you know how how, how that uh, is just such an opportunity uh, every day to see what what's this person or what's what's Ken Scott? Ken Scott and I were doing art fairs 45 years ago in the same place. You know what what's Ken shooting today? You know what's Neil Weaver shooting today? What what's Paul Arno Rowe shooting up there in the UP? You know what's Who's shooting what? What's Craig Sturkin doing? What's Bill doing? What's, what's you know, any, on and on. Just uh, uh, so many wonderful photographers out there. And I just get all amped up seeing what they're doing and, and, and getting ideas and learning from them like they're doing the same, hopefully, with us. So, uh, In fact, um, you guys are saying that this is a perfect segue for this. Um, uh, Bill chimed in, as you were mentioning him. He says, I have to say, I, sh- I shot a long Sides, uh, some premier Michigan landscape photographers, yet along uh, with the great images they produce, both are great teachers, and I have to say uh, thank you and continuing to inspire me uh, to get out and shoot. So that's a personal thanks from Bill to you guys. Thank and, you, uh, and And Todd, I still have to get back to some of Todd's questions. Um, and are you guys still good for time? Can we, can we, yeah. can we keep going? Okay. Yeah. Um, Todd said, I was doing an art fair in Ludington a few years back, and Todd came through my booth, and he told me I was the best photographer showing that day. He doesn't know who I am, but I me- that meant a lot to me and inspired me to get better, and he just wants to say thank you, Mr. Reed. So, wow, that's awesome. Um, and, that's, and, and that's a great thing, and, and, and yeah, I can tell fun. you um, – I can tell you personally, Todd's doing a lot of great things. He's a great wildlife photographer. I love seeing his work. Uh, did I say Todd? I meant – 
Uh, yeah, it is Todd. Uh, too yeah. many Todds I, tonight. I know. Um, so it's uh, one of the things he asked um, very early on um, was what would you guys consider some of the best ways to gain exposure and get your name out there for nature photography? I know that we talked about this earlier and it was brought up, but you guys have, you know, um, just how the, you know, the, the conversation naturally flows. You don't want to stop that for the sake of this question. But uh, I know we kind of covered some of this, but what are some of the things that you guys could lend uh, as good advice to Todd and just anyone who's uh, trying to get their exposure out there? And you guys mentioned hard work. And that uh, you pounded the pavement. Uh, one of the things that it's kind of like the ripple in the pond, you know. It's I, I, I think back to your guys's arrow, the quivers and the arrows that you guys talk about. And um, it's kind of like you take a shot and you get a little bit closer. You take another shot, you get a little bit closer. I, I see that same approach with your business. You're like, well, I'm going to start here. I'm going to expand a little bit further. I'm going to get that, get a little bit further and keep on growing. So what, what, would, what would that advice be? Well, one of the things uh, with our business is to have a lot of oars in the water. Don't put it all in one direction. Don't only do art fairs. Try to get, try to get in, into doing some programs. Um, you know, try to get your work in more kinds of places. Um, also, I think uh, put maybe we got one because there's something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, the most obvious, I think, are social media platforms and. Mm. Um, you know, Facebook has been huge for us, and um, but Facebook can't just be one-sided. You have to spend the time interacting. Um, back in the day, uh, my family would just so mad at me because we'd be in the evening, and everybody was, you know, watching TV, and they're like, "Well, why can't you put your phone down?" I'm, I'm like, and they'd say, "Get off Facebook." I'm like, "I'm working. I'm interacting with people. I'm answering questions. I'm commenting." I'm replying. Um, yeah. So you can't just post it and think it's done. You have to, it's a networking platform. So you actually have to take the time and network. And it's the same with Instagram or any of them. Um, it's not just post your picture and walk away. Yeah. Post your picture and then spend the rest of the day interacting uh, with the network. So yeah. that, and, that's my biggest advice. And, and, and with. Yeah, another one that I, I would really emphasize to you is to try to develop a network of contacts that you've got all set up in, in your computer so that when you get some really remarkable uh, wildlife image or a wildlife image that's like an environmental portrait and maybe it's got some weather aspect to it as well, uh, you know, bang those off for free to your, to your local medias, you know, uh, making sure you get credit, you know, but TV stations. I mean, don't don't be shy. You know, you. My my dad was in business. I mean, he sold beer and he was really good at it. But but he always used to say, you can chat all you want, Todd, but but you got to go ask for the order. You got to ask for the order. You know, and don't be shy about asking. When we did our very first book, and I was going to say to Todd and to others, that's another that's another bold step, expensive step, uh, first time scary step, but. Don't be afraid and think about doing a book of your works. You can start out with the snap fishes and, and doing a small volume, but at least you got a nice book. You can have that out at various uh, shows. You can walk into somebody's gallery with it. You can take it to the local media and see if they'll do a story on you. You know, uh, you know, uh, try to try to do, do those kind of things to, to uh, take that next step that's sort of a makes it easy for people to see how good you are and, and it, it kind of gives you a sense of, uh, and if you really publish one, it, gives you, it can give you a sense of, people a sense that, that you're, yeah. You're well, established. You're established, you're special, so, you know. You're here to stay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, 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 it's like the good old saying, fortune favors the bold. And True. Yeah, and I, I, I will say this, you know, I told you that I've been a photographer for 50 years, but it took took me till I was 50 years old, so 30 years as a photographer before I got the nerve to do my first photography book. And it was the biggest leap forward ever. And we were ahead of the curve. There weren't a lot of people at that point doing good photography books, and especially in West Michigan. And, uh, and that book, <laughs> that was a scary, expensive, 
dangerous kind of venture. So, but, <laughs> but we did it. You yeah, know, we did it, and and and, and uh, it's only been forward. Uh, it's only been forward from there. So, and and it kind of sounds like once you. You know, I always kind of talk about the aha moment. So when someone's trying to figure out something about photography and it's like, hey, you just got to keep on plugging away, plugging away, mm -hmm. and that light that light will come on and that aha moment will happen. And it kind of sounds like the same thing where it's like you, you, you take the big risk, you, you feel the fear, you get bold, and, it, and it, you said it just accelerates you forward. So it's almost like it's like this huge wind behind your sails and it's just going to – it's just – that that one aha moment is going to have a ripple effect on, on 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 what you're doing is what it sounds it's like. Everything and every time you do a new book, it's it's like every time we do a new book, we get this boost to our business, and we get a lot more opportunities come with it to to get out there and get it and our work and who we are in front of of people. Uh, and and another thing came to mind there is is uh. Short of doing a book, if you're not quite ready to take that leap, um, you know, do a nice, do a calendar, but don't do it. Don't do a what I call a Tico, you know, get a nice one. Go, mm -hmm. go to some place like Foremost in Grand Rapids and and uh, and get yourself a nice calendar made. And that that won't be cheap either, but but um, but that can be a way because uh, it's out there, visible, and and uh, you know, plan on when we print that. Uh, to uh, sell a bunch and, and plan on plan on maybe giving a bunch free because you're trying to build your you're trying to get your calendar in every doctor's office. You're trying to or, or that you you know your favorite doctors, or people that you respect, places where the public is going to see see your see your work. So that's that's another cool thing to do. Um, yeah, those those are really great tips. Um, the one other thing. Um, you know, goes back to Brad and, and what you were saying is like, you're kind of like, hey, you're, uh, don't bother me, I'm working kind of thing because you're on your phone conducting social media. Um, one of my friends who's in business, um, you know, he's his, his wife is a hairdresser. Uh, they're very successful. And uh, he, he, I sat down and interviewed him once for something that I was doing uh, for the local Muskegon businesses. And he says, he says, Instagram and Facebook and social networking are the new cold calling. You know, it's it's that you're, you're instead of being on the phone all day, you know, calling people saying, hey, I've got this great product. Yeah. Um, you're you're really going you're really kind of these are people who you're engaging who are seeing you. And it's almost like it's a little easier. It's it's the fish are coming mm. to your pond and mm. you all you have to do is drop the bait in the water. You know, yeah, yeah, you couldn't be more correct. And here's the deal. Here's the deal for all you photographers out there is when it comes to Facebook and people are looking at stuff. What's the things that they'll stop at? And they don't want to see all the stuff on there. But when they see a beautiful picture or they see you got them, the, the comment like Brad did the other night or the Northern Lights like you did the other night, they're going to stop. Or the lightning like I shot last week, you know, they are going to pause on Facebook and they're going to look at that picture. And if they're impressed, they're going to pay attention to who took it. And yeah. you're going to get, you're going to get that free market. So. Um. Jason Helmer, by the way, he uh, chimed in. And he said, "He's, he said, Todd, I like the new look." And I'm thinking, is it, is it, is it because you got a beard, Todd? Is that the new look? Is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. I've been trying for so many years to get him to grow that, and I bought him a beard trimmer and everything. Finally, COVID and lockdown, and here yeah. he is. Yeah, and the hair is getting kind of back to non Coast Guard standards too. So, yeah. Well, I mean, hey, that that's okay. You're an artist. You're you're allowed to make there these these decisions, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I say. I, you know, in the Coast Guard, you know, you, you get a haircut at least every 12 days, you know, high and tight, you know. And boy, uh, uh, nobody. I, I was, uh, I retired from the Coast Guard and I was helping for a, a couple of years. I was helping the fire, police and fire department get their new, get their guys trained on this new fire and police boat. And uh, we got them all up to speed. And then the, the police chief, he says, uh, well, a couple of us old Coasties, he says, well, you guys ready to become special police now? And one guy's like, oh, I'm, I'm too busy fishing. Another guy says, oh, I've been there, done that. I did that for the sheriff's marine. I'm not, no, I'm done. I'm not doing that. And then he looks at me and said, well, Todd, what about you? And I go, I said, does that mean I got to get one of those haircuts like you got there? He goes, well, well yeah. I go, no. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, life's full of chapters, and mine is not the high and tight chapter anymore. Well, 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 I guess what we maybe we can call it the COVID creative license, Todd. Maybe yeah, that's what it can be. There um, okay. Uh, this is another great one from Todd, um, and I think there's some more down here, but I, it's kind of like we, again, you guys had so much great information to share, and so it's kind of, you want to slip these in when it's when it's opportune and not interrupt the flow. But he, he had a really good question when you guys were talking about your gallery. He says, have you guys ever considered opening up another gallery in Michigan? Um, you know, in the beer business, we always were taught distribution equal sales, and uh, we, have had on and off bigger presences in Pentwater, Michigan. Uh, right now, we don't have a lot close. going on because um, of COVID. That, that Petri Gallery, where we've always been, is, is closed. Here. But uh, we also have our work down in Marshall, Michigan. And uh, But you've hit on a good point, and it's definitely in our strategic plan. If we want to grow our business, we need to be in and more galleries. And for a long time, we didn't have the profit margins in our work to be able to do that because when a gallery takes their cut mm -hmm. and we take our cost out, there's, no there's nothing left. left. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people say, well, you're getting your name out there, but, you know, we're busy yeah, doing other name. things too. So, um, but with, you know, things we figured out and things we've done, um, there is better margins now. So that is a big, uh, goal of ours to get into more locations and you know if we were made of money we just buy buildings and a lot of several towns in Michigan and have our own galleries and own the building and own the staff and all of that but mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're not to that point yet but we do need to work on getting into more galleries and selling our stuff on consignment. Yeah and, so, the, and the, you know the number one part, um, marketer self-marketer of outdoor photography in the world is Thomas Mangelson, and he's very smart. But first of all, he shoots all that Western stuff, landscape animals, so he shoots, shoots, shoots that territory. But he is in every high-income, high-priced town, you know, so he's in Vail, Colorado, he's in Jackson Hole, he's in, at Beaver Creek, Colorado, or wherever he is. But, but when he's in towns where, uh, you know, there's just uh, money is coming in left and right. And we've heard people say, oh, there's this, we see this amazing photography in uh, Las Vegas. And you should be there. And all that. But, uh, you know, I think, too, uh, we don't shoot national subjects. I mean, we've had some wonderful vacations, shoots, and uh, gone to... You know, Yosemite, and we've gone to Glacier, and we've gone to Banff and different places. But that's not our little bit. We are damn proud of being Michigan photographers. And, and, and for our professional standpoint, we are mostly standing on, on staying there. And the, the trick is, is how to, how to be successful or even more successful and, uh, and stay on our own little bit. That's 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 kind of where we're at. No, that's that's good stuff. Um, now, b before I think this is the last major question that's come in because you guys had some uh, personal work uh, that you wanted to show. Um, I got a, a a comment here from Daniel, and Daniel saying, um, you know, I enjoy the art of taking a photo uh, to print ready than printing it. I've been printing small prints and canvas of my photos at home till my walls are full. Yeah. I've not figured out how to turn this into a niche business. Uh, is printing is the printing market too competitive and saturated for me to move forward? And are there opportunities there? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I know printing is very hard because you know, the machines are so expensive. Uh, the ink is ridiculously expensive. The paper and canvas is ridiculously expensive. So you have so much cost going in and then if that printer is not running, um, it starts to malfunction very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a hard business. We have chose to not do the big prints ourselves uh, for a lot of those reasons. Uh, we print up to 24. 16 by 24 inch in house. And then after that, we have Joe Clark down at Toski or up in Tennessee, 
uh, printer work, Joe is from Lettington originally, and he's absolutely amazing. Um, and he's got the thirty thousand dollar Epson. Um, oh. He's got enough solvent for him. He's got enough other customers that he can keep that thing uh, running. And um, but you know, when it breaks down, that that becomes Joe's problem. He's got to figure it out. And he's got to have Epson in there. Probably every couple months, he has an Epson technician working on some part of that printer. Uh, so to answer your question, I think there is potential there. Um, but it, it's going to be a, probably a cost-heavy thing up front. And then you got to do a really good job of marketing and getting your name out there uh, to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, Here's the biggest thing um, for Daniel, and for everybody else, is, um, you know, if, if you are thinking of starting a business where you're going to make what I call fine art quality prints, you know, if that's going to be your niche, if you're going to be, you know, there's the cheap Charlie route. Like I, I bang off prints, and it's it's basically sort of like the old, uh, the back in the darkroom days, the old uh, one exposure prints. I mean, you know, like it, you just push the button and that's the print. You know, instead of dodging, burning, doing all the stuff or having having things of um, dense tomatoes and all the stuff. But but the bottom line is 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 that there is a market out there for that person that. Not cheap, but but at a fair price, prints phenomenally good, consistently phenomenally good prints. That's what Joe Clark does, and and I'm I'm like the I don't know. Brad might be worse, but we're the fussiest, most critical people when it comes to printing because I will not compromise quality. So if you want to be the quality guy learn to be the very best quality guy that you can be and you will quickly gain a following because um, when people ask us or when people ask somebody else um, you know who really makes great fine art quality prints and say hey you should check out Daniel he's really up and coming and you know it's that's really worth a look so uh, do everything to be able to produce to, to the highest standard and then and then uh, start to go out and, and, and network with people and uh, and so so people will refer you. Word of mouth, you know, in the Facebook age and that, it's far more valuable than like as, as um, Justin was saying about the cold call thing. You know, the word of mouth thing is is, is so critical in in our field. I think. Yeah, and. Um, you know, I would also something else that resonated there when you guys were uh, when you're mentioning that, um, you know, when you have the quality, right? You you have these standards. You're, you're because you're holding yourself to these standards or your printer to these standards. Um, you know, people will see that in in the reflective work. You know, you said something earlier about the girl, the young lady who was going to take your workshop, and she was afraid that you were going to change the way. Um, that that her work came across, and I, I kind of refer to that as like your secret sauce. The thing is, is I can teach you all, everything that I know. You can teach me everything that you know, but it's still going to resonate through my lens. It's still going to resonate through the embodiment of who I am as a person and how I see the world. Um, so that's you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I feel that people are buying you, right? They're they're really buying because uh, you, you guys talked about connections. Um, and how you connect with your customers, you know, they come into the store the first half hour, it's all about them. And, and that's kind of the thing is that you're, I, I think I just lost myself in the thought that I was, I was going to be very prolific and I just lost it. But it's, it's kind yeah. of like you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're selling yourself. And at the end of the day, it's because you built that connection with them. They're buying you. It's not that, you know, you're buying them. You're, you've, you've sold them the experience of like, these guys can really capture Michigan um, but they're also my friends because they came in and they asked about me and uh, and and I, it's just a lot of that. It's a lot about you at the end of the day, how much you well, put into the work. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's not being dishonest. It's being that key thing, that empathy. Can they tell that you really care about them? Mm -hmm. You know, that you yeah, I'd really like to see you improve. That'd be a cool thing. You know. Yeah, and that, and that's and that's the thing with that that being that genuine person, you know, it's it's that empathetic. I, I think that can tie into it is that you're it's because you're being genuine with your customers, you're being genuine with the people you interact with, 
you know, people can smell a rat. You know, they they're gonna know right away if you're if if you're there for there for them or there for yourself. So yeah, and you know, in life, there, there there's always gonna be that person that doesn't just doesn't like you or detests you. There's just always gonna be. When my wife moved here from Chicago to a small town, I said, you know, honey, you gotta put your blinders on and run your own way race. You know, you try to be the best person you can. You try to do what you can, but you got to live your life the way you feel is best and live up to your own ideals and standards. And and, it, and, and all you got to do is pass your personal tummy test. You know, if it smells bad, it is. Yeah. One other thing I want to hit on too is uh, for a long time in outdoor photography, a lot of the big names and almost every name we've mentioned has been a man, but um, a lot of the best shooters, I think, in Michigan and around the country are, are female. They are, they always have been, but now they're they're getting the recognition they, they finally and deserve. deserve. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Aubrey had a hope, and, you know, Rachel Jaudet here, our, our manager, mm -hmm. she and I are doing the 366 book together. I would put her work up against any man in the world. I mean, she could go to with Thomas Mingleton and go toe to toe with him. She would never say that, but or think that, but it's the truth. And um, I think it's important, um, you know, for everybody to to think of this as a, a male and female. Um, what's the word? Like an occupation or or um, well, it's a, we're, an association. We're, we're the brotherhood and sisterhood of photographers. Yeah, so not a, it's not just a brotherhood. You know, all these generic names like manhood. And, you know, those, those are all from based on sexist times. You know, we we need to we need to get with it and make sure that it's uh, that we're um, you know given proper titles and respect and, and opportunity. So yeah, we're all about. Um, you know, in my photography class, I thought at the college, I always had a, for my advanced students, so they could go and study any famous photographer they wanted, but, but I always had plenty of women. Some of my, my very favorite was Dorothea Lange, but Margaret Bork White, who was super courageous and got on top of tall skyscrapers who flew in airplanes, uh, military airplanes in World War II. You know, so it's a lot of great photographers. And I was just gonna say one more thing, when we talk about people who are our favorite photographers, um, I would say probably our most favorite photographers are those that, that have been great mentors and teachers and sheriffs. Jim Brandenburg would be Brad's big hero, and he's totally that way. Um, Galen, Galen Rowell is my big hero, and, and Brad's as well. And Galen Rowell died in a plane crash about 17, 18 years ago. He and his wife coming back from a shoot. But uh, he 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 uh, climbed about every mountain peak in the world, you know, many times. But uh, he always had his camera, and then he he turned to shooting the beauty of Yosemite, where he had grown up. And, and uh, nobody uh, nobody other than Ansel Adams has ever shot Yosemite like you know, Gail in my opinion. But 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 they were they were great sharers, like they were willing to to, to teach you the secrets. You know, and we could we could say to you know I could I could take any of them and just say you know well, hey here's 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 a tip from them you know I mean it's it's things that we use but when we use them or if we're talking in a workshop we'll we'll tell you we're not plagiarizing this is this is somebody else's idea you know this this the person who really at least was the who identified it, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. A lot of people do it, but certain people have identified what works, and the, and, and the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, so. Anyway, a lot of wonderful photographers out there, and I would say to everybody out there, uh, find some favorites, and and the more you have learned about photography, go back to that one that maybe you, you looked at their work closely five or ten years ago. Look at it again with your new perspective and your new way of of, of understanding photography, and see if now when you go back, you don't you don't see some see some things that you didn't notice before. Oh, bingo! Yeah, that's what I do. 
That's what I do. Oh, they were doing that way back then. Look at how well he does it. You know? Now I see it. You know, It's all about, all, we're all always spending our lives learning to see it. Some people say, oh, well, what's your, what's your photography class? But, well, we're going we're gonna to teach you to, uh, I try to not use the word composition. We're going to teach you to see better. Oh, I got that part down. They sometimes cut you right out. I say, well, okay, I hear what you say, but I've been at this for 50 years, and I'm still excited to learn to see better every day. And that, I think, is is a perfect ending. Is I mean, let's all go out there and practice our see. Yeah. <laughs> One thing before we close really quick, uh, people keep asking, uh, you know, what's your favorite lens? And in the past, I probably would have said um, the last eight or ten years, my 14 to 24 Nikkor 2.8, great landscaping lens, uh, and it, it will always be one of my favorites, but the best bang for the buck I've ever found, which Justin helped me with and let me play with before I bought it, was a uh, Sigma 60 to 600 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 zoom lens. So this thing zooms to 600 millimeters, and I can be on a bouncing pontoon boat on Hammond Lake without a tripod, photographing a bald eagle 100 yards away and have it be razor sharp. Wow. And, and with Rachel and my 366 book, she and I both have this lens. And, you know, we put the metadata with every photo and the metadata will be published in the book. You'll see that probably half of the photos in that book are going to be shot with these 60 to 600 because they're so versatile, they're so sharp. Uh, you know, back in the day, I had a 600 F4 Nikkor. weighed 13 pounds, cost 13 grand. It was amazing. I yeah. loved it, but it was an all-day chore just to get it out of the truck. And I was fast at getting it out of the truck. Now, with this new project, you'll see way more wildlife than ever. It's not that I'm seeing more wildlife or Rachel is seeing more wildlife. It's that we have a tool that can instantly capture it. And then my dad, he's got the expensive, amazing version. Uh, he's got the Nikkor 100 to 400. Uh, 180 to 400 F4. 1.4. Oh, no, F4. Yeah. But it's got the built-in uh, extender. Yeah. In it. Oh, that's nice. It's got the 1.4 extender. We don't have good light on this, but it's. But anyway, this is a really nice tool as well. If I was, if I was running out tomorrow and uh, could only buy one, and I wanted to run and gun and be handheld a little more, I'd probably buy the Sigma. But, sure. But you know what? I worked a lot of years, and I always uh, wanted a toy like this, and so I've got one. So, yeah. And uh, we also, you know, we we use. Uh, most of our were Nikon shoes because I was a Nikon news shooter. So that's where that all came from. And we built our system over time. Uh, Canon, Nikon doesn't matter if you're going to be the big system guy. Or, you know, Olympus uh, going the going with the mirrorless now with the Sony's or whatever. You know, whatever whatever direction you want to go. For us with the Nikon, we shoot the 14 to 24s, the 35 to 70, 80 to 200. What it is, yeah, 70, 70 to 200, the Nikon. Uh, and I'm on my third one of those in my life. And I've also had the Sigma version of that, which I like really, really well. Uh, and Brad still has the Sigma version. And my two specialty lenses are my 105 macro. Uh, my dad and Rich and I each bought one of those at the end of the year. You guys had an awesome sale and rebate on them. Mm -hmm. And then um, my other specialty lens I use a lot is my 85. 1.4 Sigma, and uh, you know the best bokeh in the world on that lens, and razor sharp, super fast. So uh, people are always asking, well, what equipment do you use? You know, like he said, 14, 24, 24 to 70, and then we got some big lenses and some specialty lenses. Yeah, and he travels with a big backpack, and I, I'm a little more selective, and I, I carry camera bags, so. Shoulder bag, yeah. shoulder bag, because I'm old news man. So, and I like to be able to just reach and grab and switch. And, um, that's just kind of me. So, y'all got to know yourself. You know what you're doing. You learn by experience what really works for you. Um, and it sounds like we're wrapping up. And I know we're coming up on uh, probably like the next 
five minutes, you guys? Is that is that yep. cool? Um, yeah, I home and cook my kids dinner. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really appreciate the extra half hour. You know, it's um, I, I guess the first thing I'll ask is on behalf of people who are kind of tuning in, would you guys be willing to do this uh, again sometime? Uh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love this. Yeah, um, and if, if people wanted to submit a list of questions to you ahead of time, too, we'll, yeah, that, that, we'll that, be prepared. So. Yeah, we, and we can theme it, too, at that point. We can yeah. kind of dissect everything. Um, right. At, but real quick, uh, Jason uh, just wanted – and I – you know, this resonates with me too. He says, "Hey, thanks for inspiring me and everyone else. Uh, keep up the great work." And he said he'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, we have yeah. Jim. We have Jim who's saying, uh, "I truly admire your work and appreciate you taking the time to do this presentation. It was greatly enjoyed from a fellow J School Spartan." Uh -huh. at, as uh, as a member of the Lansing PPA affiliate, our paths have crossed a few times, and I always enjoy hearing uh, what you have to share uh, when you have to share your knowledge. And uh, Chris Chris Logger saying uh, that it would be great for you guys to be able to do something again here soon. Jason is saying thanks, Justin, Todd, and Brad for all the great information. And um, real quick before you guys head out, um, we talked about this earlier. Do you guys have any shameless plugs that you would like to throw in there um, before you go? I, I I will throw this up. We we didn't get to showing some of your images, but I will add your website to the stream here real quick. Um, so that you can talk about this. Yeah, during COVID, you know, we uh, had to shut the gallery down, but luckily uh, we were all able to work from home and we hired John Chickering and built an all new uh, website that's specifically designed for our business and for photography. And uh, it's been live now for about a month and it has made a huge impact in our sales, especially our commercial sales or uh, big, big purchases. Um, but we just encourage people to spend time on there. There's lots of videos, it's, and there'll be more videos to come. It's interactive. Uh, it's, uh, the images look better. They're easier to find. Um, easier so, to buy something check out. Yeah. Check out. It's much simpler, <laughs> more, more secure. Yeah. Um, everything about it is, has been uh, a blessing for us, and we'd love to hear feedback. And, yeah. Uh, because it's native and we're in control of it, we can change things and make it better. And, uh, so we'd love to hear what other people think of the website and their user experience. And one more thing I'd like to say is, is that uh, we've got uh, we've got a couple of uh, book projects coming out, and just a little teaser. Uh, we should be announcing some information about those shortly. But uh, but uh, we're we got some big projects on the books for this for next. Season COVID kind of got in the way and set one of those back, but uh, we're back on track and, and uh, we'll stand by. So stay tuned. Yeah. And and the last thing, I mean, I I've been seeing some things, haven't you? Don't you guys have some workshops or anything coming up? I've seen some advertisements, yeah. and I, I we talked about the website. We've talked about some some exciting things with the books coming out. But I uh, workshops, I know are you know we're talking about sharing the knowledge, right? And that's why we're here tonight. Our Picture Perfect workshop in September was a added class because they got canceled in May. Um, and so that one is already booked. Um, and that's kind of the, the entry level class where we, we teach you everything we know about the technical side and the artistic side of photography. It's very intense weekend, but a lot of fun. Um, so if you're interested in that, look for dates coming soon for spring of for spring. 2021. Yeah. Uh, then, in September, uh, we have our Heaven on Hamlin workshop. If you love to photograph bald eagles or spend time on Hamlin Lake or the Lake Michigan shoreline, kind of between Silver Lake to Frankfurt, uh, and eat exquisite food in the most fancy kitchen you've ever seen in your whole life, and possibly drink some really good beverages, this is a workshop for you. So that's the Heaven on Hamlin. Lots of details on the website. And then one that we're super excited about, we did it once uh, two years ago, uh, our Build a Book workshop in the fall. And uh, we take you to the Porcupine Mountains and Bond Falls and the Western UP. And we shoot for several days and we teach you the process of building a book. So you will walk away there uh, having built your own kind of snapfish style, beautiful hardcover uh, book and we'll kind of help get you off the 
jump off the cliff of self-publishing your own book mm -hmm. and um, help inspire you. And even if yeah. you're not interested in ever doing a book, uh, it's just a great week of, of shooting. When we were there two years ago, it rained every day. And we thought, oh, this is going to be miserable. Even we were like, we don't yeah. want to go out. We got the best <laughs> fall color we've ever gotten in our whole life because, as you know, rain and wet makes, makes fall things color look better. Yep. And it evens out the light. So with a long exposure, we had the most saturated, vibrant, photos with a great dynamic rain all in one and so rain or shine the build a book workshop is where it's at and one of the things that's cool about doing a book even a really high quality snapfish uh, uh besides learning about uh selection and photo editing and storytelling uh, you you uh, you have something that you can create that, that that remains a legacy for you something that you can pass on to family and grandchildren I can say, you know, hey, wow, that that's really good. That's really good, and it's and 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 you put something together that is that is uh, there for posterity. So, so I think that I've always uh, been a history buff, and uh, you know, it, it's it's nice uh, to be able to uh, have people see what you saw uh, 50 years from now. And the one other workshop we have is our advanced workshop. So once you take the picture perfect workshop, you're eligible for the advanced and that one focuses on post-processing so it's not like you're going to learn photoshop in a weekend but uh, you will learn our process of what we do uh, on our images and uh, again we don't have photographic secrets people come in and they so often say how do you get the color how do you get the, the vibrancy or the contrast or the clarity We'll show you. Come take this workshop. We will show you exactly over and over what moves we consistently make on images. And we'll do it on our images, but we'll also do it on your images and show you the potential that is living right in your raw file. And for those of you that have been shooting for two months or 20 years, um, our, our Picture Perfect Weekend workshop, which is cold this fall, but will open in the spring, that's our base workshop. That gives you a solid foundation and tools for life. I mean, you will not have, hopefully, not have missed a lick. It's like you, you will, you will be so, so solid artistically and technically that that um, you and and we think that you'll go away from that seeing the world better. You know, in your own way, you'll be able to use your camera on full manual. And for people that already can do that, you'll be way more efficient. You'll hit way more home runs and eventually a grand slam almost every shot. Our goal is we want you to make book quality images all day long. And if you you know, practice and follow the steps, you can do that. Right. My 11 year old, well, she's 14 now, but I think she took it when she was nine first and then again at 11. She walked out of there shooting on full manual and to this day she can pick up a camera and do it. So if a young kid can do it, you can do it. That's a great testimony, yeah. Good stuff. Um, well, hang tight, guys. Don't go anywhere. Um, but for everyone else, um, you know, thank you for tuning in. Uh, sounds like the guys are up for doing this again sometime here soon. Uh, so we'll keep you on tabs. If you guys do have questions um, for uh, for Todd and Brad Reed, Todd and Brad Reed, they can reach you at your website? Yep, website or Facebook. Um, either of them are great. Or email. So, so like Todd and Brad Reed at toddandbradreedphotography.com? Email is info at tombradreed.com. So okay. just all spelled out. And then uh, website is Yep. Okay. All right. Great. And they can find you on Instagram in the same way, right? Yep. Yep. Thanks for tuning great. in, everybody. Okay. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Have a great night. All right. Bye.